Hi friends, so I thought I'd pick a nice spot out in the garden to talk about the failed coup that happened in Venezuela um, over the last uh, 12 hours. Well, the active part of the coup anyway. So I'm not going to pretend to know everything that took place and I'm not going to give a summary of that. But I, um, it was very disturbing to see all the uh, US neocons uh, cheering for uh, this military coup led by Guaido and Leonardo Lopez, I think his name is. And they've, of course, uh, Leonardo Lopez, who was under house arrest because uh, he was um, part of the violent Garimbas, and he's been under house arrest for a while. How he got out from that house arrest, and um, he was part of this military coup, which actually was a very, very... And anyway, he's ended up... He ended up going to the Chilean embassy uh, with 25 of his little military band, and... Uh, and then he went to the Spanish embassy, and he called that a personal choice. Um, and then, of course, he's apparently he's um, he's fled to Brazil. So I guess he knows that um, a lot of the uh, public of Venezuela, the Bolivarian Revolution, don't really entertain <laughs> traitors. Uh, they don't sort of. Uh, here's, here's Alia. She's got a little bird. Be safe collar on again. I thought I'd point that out. No, we don't like to dress up our cats. Um, so Leonardo. Um, Lopez has fled to to Brazil and uh, Maduro supporters who don't want neoliberalism in their country they don't want their their resources stolen as the uh, US empire has stated they they're going to they got a great interest in the oil in Venezuela um they don't take kindly to traitors and who would i mean can you imagine if somebody was inviting a military invasion of your country so that so that the mafia mafia type uh, U.S. empire could come in and steal your resources and privatize everything and make your life um, a living hell and return it to and and you know they've been making their life a living hell with the economic s sanctions, which are a, an act of war, really, the crippling economic sanctions. And of course, the uh, mainstream media are reporting nonsense as usual since this uh, military coup um, took took place even to the point of saying that Maduro Maduro was talked out of um, fleeing to Cuba by Russia Th these people are shameless really the sort of stuff that they um, put out the mainstream media and Marco Rubio was salivating at the thought of you know this military coup and he was tweeting at 3 a.m. in the morning um, getting very excited. Uh, so anyway, it was badly planned, this military coup, even though it was US-backed, badly planned. From my understanding, coups usually take place in the, uh, in the um, nighttime, and they usually do it very quickly, and they take over um, points that they take over the sort of different um, media, and uh, they sort of storm different places, and they basically do it in a kind of a, a very coordinated way and a planned way. And uh, this one has just been sort of all over the place, not very well planned, thank goodness. And uh, so that's that's a very good thing, that it wasn't planned properly. Or, co you know, as somebody suggested, it could have even been made that way so that, um, that Maduro arrests... Guaido or worse or you know there may be even the opposition is hoping that Guaido gets killed so that um, you know so that, that that's even more reason to give an excuse not that they need any give an excuse to the US you know Washington to go in and do a military invasion what's sort of disturbing to me is that I heard that um, Eric Prince who is that sort of Christian fascist he used to have Blackwater, which committed all these terrible atrocities in Iraq. Um, Eric Prince has now got a, um, it's called Academy, I think, is what Blackwater is called now. And uh, it's amazing. I, I don't know why these people are able to, Eric, the likes of Eric Prince, you know, they do all these awful things in, you know, 
in Iraq and then they're able to just walk around freely. It's just amazing. Well, anyway, apparently he is... I've heard that he might be um, attempting to... He's calling um, these private military contractors, 5,000 of them, to come down to Colombia or something, and he's, it's looking like he might actually do some sort of a invasion. Um, because, as you know, you may or may not know that um, Eric Prince is, uh, has been trying to convince Donald Trump to, uh, to allow his uh, academy, you know, the, the, mili the private military contractors, um, to conduct the, the war, or rather the occupation of Afghanistan. Um, so, you know, he's sort of a... It's kind of... It's just sort of awful, really that somebody like him is just able to, you know, sort of do this kind of thing. I mean, it's just outrageous. There's so many international laws being broken here. And this is the amazing thing is the U.S., you know, going on about Russia, you know, Russia interfering, uh, which is, in, you know, all governments interfere in, in various governments' um, business. But the extent to which the U.S. thinks, you know, is um, the propaganda about Russia is just has led to a new Cold War and possibly a hot war. But, um, you know, the, the, the fact that they're com complaining about Russia and here they are openly calling for a military invasion of another country and encouraging people in that country to do, to do that. I mean, you know, it, it's unbelievable, really. And yet it's not, it's not unbelievable because this is like the modus operandi of the U.S. empire. But anyway, uh, I was going to play you a few little excerpts that I saw today. One is from Daniel McAdams. I'm not fond of... He's from the Ron Paul Institute and libertarian and um, not a fan of that. Um, and I won't go into why. But anyway, he actually did, did a very interesting little... He gave his thoughts on this failed coup by Guaido and Lopez, which is US-backed. And then, then um, the Real News Network certainly gave... a an interesting couple of interviews with two of their... Um, one was a reporter that's down in Venezuela, in Caracas, and, and uh, has witnessed a lot of this. And then um, the other one is... Uh, another one, I, I forget right now what it... But anyway, I'll play, I'll play some, of, uh, some excerpts of that because I think they sort of concisely sort of um, talk about what's transpired in the last, um, you know, 12 hours or so or whenever this coup actually started, and this failed coup. And um, it would be lovely if that was the end of it for a while. I know the U.S. is never going to give up until until they, you know, crush the Bolivarian Revolution, until they get to put in a um, puppet. It'll be somebody else. Guaido, I think, is finished. But it'll be some other puppet that they're probably grooming right now or have been grooming because the National Endowment for Democracy, which is a CIA um, regime changing sort of group uh, was grooming Wido through uh, Canvas, C A N V A S, for the last 10 years or so. So they're obviously they're going to have to find somebody else to groom and somebody who is a little bit more together. Um, that's really sad, but that's probably what's going to happen or is happening as we speak. We just won't hear about it until a couple of years in the future or something, or maybe sooner. But the US Empire is probably embarrassed by this failed coup and they. They're going to, uh, and I, I say U.S. empire because it's neither one party, neither one party or the other, neither the U.S. Democrats or the uh, GOP. It's the whole, the machine, the, the national security state is ongoing, been trying to overthrow, you know, the um, Bolivarian Revolution starting way back in the, at the end of the 90s in particular with Venezuela and um, did a, did a coup in 2002 with um, Hugo Chavez, and I, I invite you to watch uh, South of the Border by um, Oliver Stone. It's a really great documentary. I posted a link. I'll post a link in the comment sec section. You can watch it. Um, it's really, really interesting. So do watch that. And uh, and um, so so they anyway. So they're not going to give up until you know something since till they're able to get that hold of that oil, which they've openly talked about wanting you know the bolton john bolton and uh, mike pompeo john bolton in particular has openly talked about the wanting of that oil in venezuela the the you know the big oil companies want to get their hands on it so you know they're not even doing it they're not even pretending anymore 
you know, they, it's just, you know, Trump, as, oh, as I said, you know, Trump, Trump is really the mask taken off of empire and they don't like it because he's crass and they, they like to do things in sort of more covert ways. But now it's just all out in the open. They're stomping around like brown shirts in some ways. Um, and the, um, you know, the national security state doesn't want everything to be so, so exposed. Um, you know, they like the likes of Obama, who's, you know, sort of cool and, you know, groovy or whatever. And, uh, you know, they like to have a smooth operator as a front puppet so they can do all this stuff behind the scenes. And it was Obama who actually, you know, uh, called um, Venezuela a national security threat when he was in office. You know, so they keep this narrative going about Venezuela and these people that M Nicolas Maduro was a dictator and all this sort of stuff. If Nicolas Maduro was a dictator, Guaido would be dead and so would Leopold um, Lopez, people like that. And there would be major clampdowns on any protesters, the middle, you know, the very affluent pro protesters that support Guaido. They'd be probably, there'd be a lot of carnage, you know. Um, Anyway, and if they cared, the U.S. claims to care about, as they always do, humanitarian reasons for everything. But we know that's just nonsense. It's, I mean, if they cared about humanitarian reasons, they would be invading Saudi Arabia and they'd be invading Israel, particularly after Saudi Arabia beheaded 37 people and they were Shia. And one of them was 16 years old and he was beheaded and tortured before he was beheaded, publicly beheaded, for texting about a protest. That's a 16-year-old. You know, he was electrocuted and all this sort of thing. I mean, if they cared, if, you know, and the Saudi, Saudi Arabia, the monarchy there, um, is a, uh, a very big ally of the U.S. And one of the reasons is because the uh, military-industrial complex and the weapons industry just love Saudi Arabia. They love selling arms to them and so forth. And Saudi Arabia helps them with their crimes against humanity in the Middle East. Uh, and what, and also the crimes in in Yemen. They're selling weapons. Everybody, including my country, is selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, to uh, for the ongoing genocide of of the Yemeni population. And one child every ten minutes dies of starvation and and disease. And that's um, the U.S. is completely backing that. Uh, that Saudi um, genocide, Saudi sort of led genocide in uh, in Yemen. So you know, if the U.S. cared about um, humanitarian causes and you know and about the population of various countries you know it's it's just a it's just a terrible joke at this point it's really really sad anyway um that's really all i wanted to say about about um this uh, failed coup in venezuela uh it was sort of awful just before i went to bed because i'd heard about it at about 11 o'clock last night oh here's swifty um i heard about we adopted swifty when he was 11 and a half that was a couple of years ago um Anyway, so uh, we, uh, you know, so yeah, I heard about I heard about this um, about eleven o'clock last night because I live in the southern hemisphere and in Tasmania, and uh, and I just thought how sad, uh, you know, it's, it's just so awful to sort of have this specter of U.S. empire constantly trying to destroy that country, and so many people will be killed if they have their way. So many. Of a lot of poor people live in Venezuela. Well, they're actually a lot better off than they were before Chavez got into power. Things have improved so much for um, the Venezuela, most of the Venezuelan population, and the, and the people that want to overthrow Maduro are actually wealthy Venezuelans who want private privatization everywhere, and they're usually sort of white, usually white people, or I should say, much lighter skinned. It was just, it's just sort of so sad this goes on and on and on. And, uh, you know, it must be awful to live with that specter of that awful empire hanging over you all the time and always looking for opportunities to mess with the infrastructure like the electrical power outages, which the U.S. was actually cyber, sort of cyber meddling kind of thing in their power outages. Imagine having that all the time, you know, going on and on and on. And all you're trying to do is live in peace and have some social equality in the country. And, and you've got this awful empire, empire hanging over and, and, and trying to mess with you constantly and trying to destroy your way of life. It must be awful. I mean, we've had the U.S. medal in this country. I've talked about it before. I'm not going to go into it, but they medal all the time. And my government actually supports this idiot Guaido. You know, it's disgusting. The, the coalition, that's the government in power at the moment in Australia, and 
the Labour Party, and the Greens are silent, but the Labour Party supports and has openly said we support Juan Guaido. You know, they're, they're just, um, just ridiculous and, and disgusting. You know, they're just US lackeys, my government here, both major parties, and the Green Party is silent, the Green Party. How fabulous to live in a country like that where the Green Party is, is supposed to be, you know, <laughs> here comes Rooney, everybody's coming over to say hello. Rooney's got a bird be safe collar. So feel free to subscribe to this channel um, at Vegan Trove on YouTube and click the notifications bell, otherwise you don't receive um, updates. Click the like button if you like the content and, um, and leave comments if you wish. I always enjoy your comments. So thanks so much for watching. Um, may the Bolivarian Revolution live on and may the US Empire uh, fall um, because it's, it's actually completely out of control at now. now. It's completely out of control and um, it's, it's frightening how, um, how so warmongering they are at this point. And I sort of feel if, uh, if Eric Prince gets involved with his um, 5,000 mercenaries, that it's, it's quite likely that possibly Russia will get involved and it could end up in some sort of World War Three thing. This is a thing because Russia sort of has interests in the oil there too. They have a, a deals with Venezuela. And Venezuela has, um, as I understand it, the largest reserve of oil now on the um, planet. And that's why the U.S. is so desperate to overthrow that government and privatize everything and let the oil companies go in. And so Russia um, can see anyway that every country that is overthrown by the U.S. is one more threat to them because they're already being threatened by the US and they're already, uh, China is being threatened and you know, there's basically, uh, but the good thing, the good news is that all these uh, countries that are being threatened are all coalescing together and forming, it's becoming a multipolar world instead of um, unipolar, instead of the US calling the shots, it's actually becoming multipolar and that's one of the reasons too that they want to invade Venezuela uh, because the uh, Venezuelan government is for that, a multipolar world, and um, also because they're um, socialist as well, they're a socialist-like sort of country, and that's absolutely anti-capitalism as far as the US is concerned, and they can't have that. Um, but there's, there's, there's a more of a move for a multipolar world, and the US empire is like a wounded, if I can put it this way, without meaning to be speciesist, but uh, like a wounded animal flailing around and just lashing out at every, everyone because, um, because they're falling and they're losing power and they can see it. And so that's why they're, you know, they're more and more dangerous because they can see that they're falling and uh, that they, they're failing, they're a failing empire. And it's only a matter of time before that'll be the end of the empire. It happens to all empires, all empires end the um, Roman Empire and this is going to end too but it's going to end it's going to be very dangerous before it does end and that's the worry um, so anyway thanks so much for watching till next time bye for now well I wonder how much in control he really is whether someone else is pulling the strings I mean the whole thing is rather farcical uh, first you start with this very strange uh, video seemingly recorded at dawn with a very tight shot just showing him in a couple of what looked to be military officers there's a military base apparently in the background unless it's a green screen or something uh, making it look like he now controls the base the whole thing is very carefully scripted and and uh, and as I say, slightly farcical because after that, really nothing transpired. Nothing melded together. A couple of uh, a couple of uh, so-called uh, military troops who turned to his side, uh, who were arrested, said they were brought out by subterfuge. Their officers told them that they had to go out there. So the whole thing really is uh, has fizzled at this point. Well, and, and a lot of this has to do with the United States and their involvement. I mean, you have, pre you have uh, Senator Marco Rubio down in Florida. I mean, he has been on a Twitter storm, basically trying to do everything he can to encourage people against Juan Guaido, uh, that, or to encourage people to support him. There's been a lot of thre uh, th threats made by the U.S. leadership, yet Maduro is still in power. So are these empty threats, or is this kind of the support for this aggressive strategy with Venezuela that we saw a few weeks ago starting to decrease here on American soil? 
Yeah, you could almost see Rubio drooling. He, his first tweets are, are time stamped at like three in the morning. He's up furiously telling people, and talk about how, something unseemly for a U.S. senator, telling people to go to the streets in a foreign country and overthrow their government. You know, it's, it's really unheard of. It's very ironic that a lot of these people, Rubio, the neocons, and even a lot of people in the, in, in the Democrat side who were just recently, for the last two and a half years, talking about how horrible the Russians are interfering in our elections. Here they're openly not only interfering in the elections in a foreign country, but telling foreign people to rise up and overthrow their own government. It really just shows how, uh, how arrogant uh, these people are. I mean, it's just really incredible. Well, okay, so let's just say Guaido is successful and he's able to actually uh, overthrow the government. Have we seen any plans presented by Guaido or Guaido's team on how they're going to actually set up a democratic government? And more importantly, the elections that follow this, how are they going to hold these? Do we see any plans coming out of his organization or the United States for that on how they're going to guarantee a democracy in the future for Venezuelans? Well, I, first of all, I don't see any chance. I think today was really the last nail in the coffin of Guaido. Uh, this was his big chance. This was his big stage appearance. And I think, uh, I think this is all over. I think perhaps the whole thing was staged or scripted for, the, for Guaido to get arrested. You know, he's, certainly he's a lot more value to the opposition in Venezuela now, arrested or even dead, because they need a cause, this bell eye, uh, to try to motivate people, to try to vote, motivate the military, because it's very clear from the people in the streets and from the military not turning that, frankly, despite what John Bolton's uh, fervent wishes are, uh, Maduro, for better or for worse, is genuinely supported. So when the U.S. talks about we're going to support the people in Venezuela, well, what people are they talking about? The people who support their government don't count? Well, so moving forward then, so let's just say it is squashed today, and you talk about Juan Guaido. First of all, where does he go from here? What can he do and not be seen as kind of a traitor to his country if Maduro is able to hold on to power? But more importantly, can the United States and the United States government actually get along with a government still under Maduro going forward? Because there are some major economic issues and the sanctions that the U.S. is putting on them that are causing a lot of this uh, to occur. This is where President Trump, you know, if he, doesn't, if he doesn't know what he's doing, he certainly allowed himself to be boxed in by the neocons. He should have known better. Now he is, is in a situation where he can't back down. The only thing, he, he can't back down and have negotiations, as they should do, or urge the Venezuelans to work this out on their own. He's committed the U.S. to regime change in Venezuela, and his, his policy options now are few and, for, and far between. So it really is an, another neocon disaster uh, that, 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 uh, that President Trump is facing, and he brought it on himself. But that's the thing, Daniel. You and I both know President Trump is not going to admit a loss anywhere. So how does he get himself out of this situation? At the very least, how can he say, you know what, we tried, or some way the U.S. is winning? I, I find it very hard right now for the U.S. to find a way with Maduro's power to even say we helped in some form, positive way in this situation. Well, can you imagine if, uh, if, if you and I, Scotty, went down to the mall with a bunch of soldiers and said, we're going to overthrow the government, and we started firing? You know, we would face the wrath, rightly so, of our government. I think if Maduro is the, is the legitimate president or is a, 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 the president of Venezuela, now he has an obligation uh, to do something about a military coup staged on his soil. Maybe that's the whole idea. Maybe that's the whole idea of Bolton and his gang is to provoke some, some reaction like this. Maduro simply can't ignore what happened today, as farcical as it was. There's no question that Guaido, the opposition, would not have gotten to the point where they are today without the direct, explicit, and, and very aggressive backing of the Trump administration. And of course, Trump has made clear, as a, have all his um, advisors, that a military options on the table. I think it's curious that just recently reports came out uh, just in the past few hours that Eric Prince, former uh, owner of founder of Blackster and mercenary companies, has offered mercenaries to go to Venezuela. That may have already happened. Sometimes the news gets out after the fact. So, you know, I think that it's absolutely clear that the opposition has been propped up by the United States. The U.S. has played an ongoing aggressive role. I've been denouncing it now for over 15 years in trying to undermine first the Chavez government now Maduro's administration. And certainly there are many in Venezuela who would hope for change in their country, but they don't want a U.S.-backed regime in place. They don't want a far-right um, imposed regime that, that answers to foreign interests, which is what we're seeing take place in the country. And I do believe it's a very dangerous situation in Venezuela. There could be, um, you know, violent conflicts ahead. 
and and that without you know this explicit backing of the United States, that we wouldn't be seeing the level of you know chaos that's taking place in the country today, as well as the sanctions that have been imposed that have exacerbated Venezuela's humanitarian crisis and the difficulties that a majority of Venezuelans are facing on an economic level in the country. Ava Gollinger, want to thank you very much for being with us, Venezuelan-American journalist who served as legal advisor to the former Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez.